I have a small question about the mechanics of perception. When we were doing the exercise earlier, uh, looking at a person as a person and then looking at them as awareness, I found the second time that it was really hard to focus on her features or her eyes because it, it became that kind of they used to teach in my Buddhist meditation that kind of global view, soft focus thing that was happening. Mm. And I noticed in your video when you were trying to do the gap between waking and realizing that you're in this room at this time in this part of the universe, the sheets were out of focus. And then the sheets slowly came into focus. And I noticed that when I focus on something, I cannot help but make it an object. And I cannot help but become an object in response to that object. And so I wanted to ask about seeing that way, that even if, and the other piece of it was, um, there was this practice I used to have to practice seeing the Buddha in everybody. So no matter how pissed off I was at my mother, I saw herself as a little Buddha. And it helped, you know, but all it did was replace the story with a better story. It didn't really do anything, but it's self-help, yeah. right? Yeah. But now, when I was looking this morning, I was getting that it's not another story over there. Yes, exactly. So, you're quite right. That it's not enough to, to see somebody, to, to, to look at someone and to imagine that they are yourself, to, to superimpose that belief. It, it puts a sticky plaster over the separate self for 24 hours or for 20 minutes, but it come, it doesn't really uproot the sense of separation. So what we were what we were doing this morning was not imposing an idea on top of our self, but we were really trying to go deeply into our, staying very close to our experience. And you're right that if we If we look at somebody in the eyes, we there is very often a subtle wanting of something from them, a subtle either of projecting something onto them, trying to communicate some kind of feeling to them, or wanting something from them. And that's why this morning we, we, we left, we were left looking for some time at each other, in spite of the, the discomfort that, they, that, that this may arouse, because after a while this, this negotiation between egos mm -hmm. drops, falls down, and you describe it as it, it's a softening of the focus. Mm -hmm. You're no longer projecting anything or, or wanting anything, so you're just looking clearly. It, it's like a neutral looking. It, it may appear from the old perspective of the separate self, it may appear to be even a, a little cold mm. because it's not all gooey and, <laughs> and, and trying to... But it, it's not cold. It's, it's actually just devoid of, of the uh, kind of negotiating separate self, trying to project something, trying to get something. So it's kind of... It, it it's more yes it can it can be seen as more neutral it did feel it the, the tone of it was a little colder and but also i noticed that i didn't see any object in the field anymore and in fact i was noticing whatever quality she had so the lamp had and everything else had like there was no person there anymore is what yes. happened yes. and it wasn't like i disappeared or anything i was like something was still looking in my experience but it, it was like I, I, I didn't really understand, like I was trying to grok it, you know, and then it kept fading in and out. Yes. You see that the separate self is, is always going towards an object. So when we look at something with the feeling that we are a separate self, we, we go towards it. We're focused on it, we seem to go towards it. Mm -hmm. From awareness's point of view, which is the only real point of view, the object comes to it. Mm -hmm. 
And it's a very different quality of looking. Say that again. The separate self is always going towards something. So when it looks at an object, there is, there is a sense that I, the separate self, am going out from in here towards the object. Yeah. The awareness's way of seeing, which is actually the only way of seeing, is very different. The object comes to it. It doesn't go out to the object. The object comes back, comes to it. So it, 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 it's always at rest. It, awareness, I, yourself, it is, is always here. It never needs to go out of itself towards an object or a person. It, it allows everything to come to it. And this, it's, you can see this in, in, in the way we hear, the way we see. It's a very different quality of seeing. Let, 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 let's just try it now. Let, let's try. It, it really evoke the sense of separation. Feel that what I am is a separate self. And look at something, this, this flower. Or look at it as a separate self going towards an object. The separate self might might want something, from, might want to go up to it, might want to buy it, might, might want to smell it, might want to, to go towards it. And now, evoke or, or be the presence of awareness. Be knowingly the presence of awareness and allow this perception to come to you, to arise in you. Isn't there a different quality of seeing? Isn't it tangible, the difference? It seems to be the same activity of seeing, but it has a very different quality. Well, the focus does soften. Now, it, it may be that the fo focus softens, but in some cases it, it's, not, it's not appropriate for the focus to soften. For instance, if you're driving, or if you're... <laughs> if you're then it's, it's, it's best to keep... But so just the f it's not really about the fact of whether or not it's, it's in focus. Although I understand what you mean when there's a kind of softening. It's not really a softening of the focus. It's the softening of going out as an entity in here towards something outside of myself. It's, it's a deep relaxation that allows experience to come to us. We are not moving through time and space. We are not an entity always moving forward, always destined to, towards a future. No, we are always in the same place, this ever-present now. Experience comes to us. You're on the cusp of something very critical in terms of experience here, because I also noticed what happened when you did that switch, is my whole body relaxed. Yes, perfect. Exactly. My whole body relaxed. Yes, don't, don't you and feel I've the And I settled into the space. You're, you're not going out. Yeah. And, and in, this, in the looking that we did this morning, we're not going out to a person. Mm. We're not, we're, 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 everything relaxes. The body relaxes. That because why? Because the awareness in which the in which the experience is happening is already total relaxation, total openness. So the body is taking on the qualities of awareness. Previously, in the first way of looking, awareness takes on the qualities of the body. It becomes local and limited, and and then we go out. But now. The body takes on the qualities of awareness. It becomes open. It, it doesn't have a motive. It doesn't want anything from the other. So the body softens and opens. It's actually mimicking the presence of awareness in a way, sharing its qualities. Rather than awareness sharing the qualities of the body, the body now shares the qualities of awareness. It becomes open, transparent, empty. And it this it has a, an effect on, on the way we see, the way we walk, the way we eat, the way we speak to people, the way we look at one another. It, 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 th this deconditioning of the whole system of, of the body-mind is, is, very, is very subtle. We don't realize how deeply embedded in the system it is the separate self is. It, it permeates subtly the way we think, not just the way we think, the way we feel, the way we see, the way we move, the way we 
the way we do everything. So this this yoga of non-duality, this tantric yoga that we do, is is very very subtle. It, it's a way of reconditioning the way we see, the way we perceive, the way we hear, the way we. It, it's an, an application of our intellectual understanding to, to these to every aspect of our lives. I'm going to take this one step far, farther because if you look at the headless way, the purpose of those exercises in Douglas Harding is to get grok the whole idea that most of us here already get. We get it intellectually. Yes. You don't need a whole bunch of pointing out, pointing in, real to realize that this is this is yes. this is us. This yes. is that we are. It's the part that you just tried yes. to get us to get, which is in the body, microsecond yes. by microsecond. We're always taking, we're solidifying into a self in relation to to objects. Yes. And and if you could think of. 20 more exercises that would do what you just tried to do with the flower and break it down that would be so useful because mm -hmm. it is not about really for me it's not about getting the idea yes. it's about what what she was saying it's the embodied moment by moment perspective in the body held in the body way below our conscious understanding at the brain stem level yes. of what the hell we're doing in relation to the world here yes you know Enlightenment and, and awakening is uh, is overrated. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, because in the, in the sixties and, and the seventies, uh, India was the place to go for, for enlightenment. So our ideas of enlightenment were coloured by the exotic culture of of India, and because we didn't spend time living with sages it, we, we, we went it was more this whole post enlightenment part of the process was just never spoken about so it was always enlightenment was the big thing and it was always colored by the exotic packaging of India mm -hmm. enlightenment is not exotic it's India is exotic but <laughs> enlightenment isn't and, and, and we, we muddled the two up so we put Awakening way up here on a pedestal as the kind of the final goal. It's not. It's just the first step. Realizing our true nature is just just the beginning. By far the larger part of, of, of what we do here is how is this? How does this impact all aspects of our experience? The thinking is is such a small. I mean, how much of our experience is really to do with thinking. I mean, if we were to rate thinking mm -hmm. along with, with, with sensing, with seeing, with touching, with hearing, with tasting, I mean, where does thinking rate? You know, not very highly. You know, you, you, you earlier, you, you didn't say to us, I, I, I'm longing to think more. It, it's, it's not really what we want. It, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not very sexy. It's not. It's not juicy. It's. 